<laughs> Alright, anyway, um, if you guys are just thinking about uh, prepping or survival or planning ahead, <laughs> even squirrels do it, ants do it, but anyway, grasshopper. Um, let me see, the first thing that you got to get squared away is water because without water, what? You know, you can die in about three days. So, if you think you can go down to the local uh, creek and drink some of that water, um, I think you've got another thing coming. So anyway, the first thing you got to do to uh, uh, get prepared is to get some water. <clears throat> and what I'd suggest is go ahead and buy, a, there's something called a water bob. Anyway, it's something you can put in your bathtub and you can fill it up with water. Um, so the whole bathtub basically would be enclosed in a big plastic bag so you could just fill up that whole bathtub with the water and be inside a plastic bag keep it sanitary um, that's one thing you could do I mean that's basically when you saw an emergency happening then you could go ahead and fill it up uh, before the water comes out because if you haven't noticed water comes from those big towers and uh, when electricity stops then stuff like that stops too um, also the water would be questionable uh, as to about as to how clean it would be as well because you know when that stuff uh... anyway the water treatment plants you know they might occur some problems as well so um, all right what next uh, gotta square away some water uh, the other thing that you could do is you can get some um, some like uh, five gallon of water uh, containers and fill those up and uh, you can buy some uh, some drops of bleach maybe like five drops of bleach you better look that up I'm just off the top of my head maybe you'll remember something put uh, five drops of bleach in there and uh, and seal that baby up um, that's one thing you could do you can also buy you know go to a grocery store and they have some of the water that's all sealed up in a little five gallon bottle and um, or even three gallon bottle and you can just buy those and store them um, for quite some time um, <clears throat> what else can you do with water um, those would be some eating things so uh, go to the grocery store and buy some just plain bleach with no kind of additives or no funky anything I think it's sodium chloride chlorides I don't know anyway it's bleach just straight bleach no extra fluffy nothing uh, and that can be used to uh, pretty much clean water, keep microbes out for storage and or for drinking. Of course, you can bottle, you can boil water. Um, what else about water? Uh, you got iodine tablets for water. You can boil water. Um, you can buy uh, basically what amounts to chlorine tablets to put in there. Um, but the first thing you should do is uh, get some things to store water in an emergency and also go ahead and store some water for an emergency. So, you know, one of the things that's easy to do is, is start drinking distilled water, which is good anyway because you don't get any fluoride anymore. So anyway, drink the distilled water and um, buy them in three or five gallon jugs and basically just rotate them out. So you've always got more water than you need and that way if emergency happens you've already got the water you don't have to run to the store and fight with the other people to get water you already have some okay um, you know you can also buy water filters and all kinds of stuff just go to any uh, backpacking store uh, but anyway you can't survive you know three days without water so go ahead and square the water away um, next is food uh, mountain house sells uh, freeze-dried food of all varieties um, in these little number 10 cans and they're all sealed up and they will last you believe it or not like I don't know I can't remember exactly something like 20 years <clears throat> if you don't open them they'll, they'll it's freeze-dried food and they'll last like 20 years so that would be the thing that I would suggest for you to get to for food storage um, you can also buy rice and beans and put them in some uh, big uh, plastic uh, buckets and seal them up um, uh, canned goods, you can buy canned goods, they just don't really last that long in most cases, but they do last longer than an expiration date, but, you know, if you want to start simple, buy some of this uh, Mountain House freeze-dried food, um, you can order it by the case, the other thing that you could do would be to, um, oh, 
one of the simple things you can do is just start buying more food than you eat. In other words, you rotate your food out and you buy more food than you eat so you always have much more food on hand than you need, okay? So if there's any disruption, disruptions in supply lines or something like that, then you have food because you have more, you store more food than you can eat in a week, you know? What a brilliant idea. All right, so that's food. Uh, if you buy the like the, the freeze-dried food and the little foil pouches, uh, those only last like seven years. So the number 10 cans, you know, like I said, that's like 20 years or something. So that's, you know, it's almost forever in my book. Um, so anyway, uh, water, food. Um, the other thing is shelter. Um, so for shelter, let me see. Well, it'd be good to have some kind of a place to go to. Uh, when trouble happens because the cities are going to be the last place you want to be so you need to get out of the cities as soon as possible so yeah a little cabin in the woods somewhere would be awesome um, if not that then at least a, a couple of good tents get some good tents get some sleeping bags things of that if your house burns down you need a place to stay and you know Joe Bob may, want, may not want to take you in you can at least have shelter you know somewhere um, and also in shelter, I would also include things like uh, you should buy some high quality, um, what do you call it, uh, thermal underwear and uh, hats for everybody. And uh, so buy stuff, don't, don't get anything cotton because cotton is, is not good for cold weather at all. So uh, get the uh, synthetic thermal underwear or get wool type stuff because that's really the only way to go. And that... Uh, that I put into shelter because basically what a house is for is a house is used to protect you from the elements because you can die very quickly if you're out um, in the extreme cold and it's raining and snowing and things like that you can die pretty quick so you need shelter so that's a house accomplishes shelter to keep you from freezing to death um, a tent and then we go down to uh, clothes can keep you, you know, protected from the elements so you don't die. Okay, what comes after that? We did water, food, shelter. I'll go ahead and do weapons next. It depends on how you, where you put things in the hierarchy. Um, weapons. <clears throat> a good assault rifle is a good uh, plan. You can, you can buy uh, a 5.566 uh, AR-15 style rifle and then you can also get these little, uh, I think it's CMMG, it's a little bolt that you just, you take out the regular bolt and pop this bolt in and buy a special magazine and then you can shoot 22 long rifle in your assault rifle. So that way you could use your assault rifle for personal defense and then you could also use it for um, switch it to 22 and shoot a 22 long rifle to shoot a squirrel or what what have you um, uh, shotguns are good but the ammunition is bulky um, but a shotgun is good because you can go, you can buy bird shot you can buy rabbit shot you can buy uh, buck shot for people and deer it's very flexible um, like I said the only the only drawback is uh, is uh, the ammunition is very bulky, but it's also very powerful. So, uh, so a semi-auto you could buy now, or go to a pump. If you learn to shoot a pump, you can shoot as fast as a semi-automatic. So, um, uh, you also need some kind of a handgun, and uh, and basically, you know, when it comes to this, like what you need to defend yourself, it basically comes down to. Um, you know, if they have a handgun, then what you want is a rifle. Um, if they have a knife, you want a handgun. If they have a knife. I mean, if, if, they, if, they, if they don't have anything, then you want a knife. I mean, so, yeah, actually, if you really want to win a fight, the, the whole objective is always to be one step up from what they have. So, <clears throat> that's why Iran wants a nuclear weapon. You know, you need to be one step up, because otherwise you get bullied. Uh, ask North Korea. So anyway, no politics here, but... <clears throat> so anyway, um, 
you always want to be one step up and a rifle is much more accurate than a handgun uh, in general it can hold more rounds so you do need an assault rifle for self-defense and the reason you need an assault rifle is that uh, it is good for uh, multiple opponents it is also good to fight people uh, fighting pistols um, using pistols and it's also good because it can handle short range and it can handle uh, long range I mean you can very easily shoot out to you know 200 yards just with iron sights no specialized scope or anything so um, don't listen to somebody who tells you don't need a, a rifle for self-defense they're they couldn't be more wrong um, a pistol is a backup to the rifle um, and it's also good for very confined spaces and things of that nature um, but you actually do need assault rifles so don't let the people that know nothing about guns and hate guns tell you about what guns are for because they do not know what they're talking about um, now the other thing you, you need to do if you're gonna buy guns is you need to have a, um, a bunch of magazines for these weapons and you also need to have a lot of bullets for these weapons um, you can buy a bunch of bullets that are full metal jacket uh, for practicing and then you can buy uh, hollow point bullets or soft point bullets for self-defense and uh, there's even some bullets that they sell in these uh, they call you know like tin tin cans basically like huge sardine cans and those would be ideal because you could just dig a hole in the ground and throw those in there and they would keep for a long time um, uh, throw them in your garage wherever um, so that's what you should do on that otherwise you could uh, get some PVC pipe and uh, seal up both ends of PVC pipe with caps and uh, cement and you could bury some rounds or put some rounds somewhere where you're not worried about the elements getting into them because they will kind of rust they will kind of corrode if you just leave them out yeah, exposed to the elements uh, so that's weapons um, and I'm just doing a brief overview here for the people that haven't done anything and you know haven't gotten into this I'm just trying to go right sh shoot through the whole thing real quick um, we can go into depth on all these topics of course <clears throat> let me see what else after weapons uh, it's got to be uh, medical so medical you may not be able to get to a doctor <coughs> conveniently um, or the hospitals just may be overwhelmed I mean you know when hell things go to hell in a handbasket uh, do doctors and hospitals could get overwhelmed very quickly so you can't count on just popping into the emergency room if something happens um, <clears throat> there are some places online where you can uh, order some uh, antibiotics and uh, different uh, over-the-counter prescription medicines which I would highly recommend um, and then you also have just mundane things that you might need like uh, things to treat cold and flu uh, aspirin Tylenol bandages iodine things to clean wounds with things to close up wounds with I mean just basically saying you know hey you're on your own go ahead and get some some medical supplies to square yourself away um, <clears throat> All right, well, uh, to be continued, I'm going to take a little break and uh, be back. Okay. So, let me see. What comes after? Let me see. Water, food, shelter, firearms, medical. Uh, how about money? All right. Bullets are money, which you will figure out right now because it's very hard to get bullets so you miss that boat so hopefully things will get better and you can stock up if not well you I guess you're just behind the curve um, bullets could be money <clears throat> um, let me see what else could be money um, silver gold um, maybe tools uh, basically you know real money is stuff that you can hold in your hand and is actually worth something okay so within money uh, nickels uh, within money I would not count uh, dollars so a hundred dollar bill twenty dollar bill five dollar bill one dollar bill worthless 
Um, good to have a small amount of that um, for emergencies, but it really isn't a store of wealth. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't have any intrinsic value, okay? Uh, those are little pretty pieces of paper with ink on them. And um, if you look uh, in the past, you will find a lot of uh, uh, currencies like that that uh, became worthless, like in uh, Germany before the, uh, the World War. Um, that's what happened. Um, basically, it became worthless. So there could be a come, come a time where you know your <clears throat> your dollars are worth nothing, or you could wake up like I did one time in Mexico and wake up and my my the peso was worth half of what it was the night before, at least in terms of dollars. So anyway, if these things happen, and like I said, what you've got is a pretty piece of paper with ink on it, backed up by the good faith of a government. And if you haven't figured stuff like that out yet, then I feel sorry for you. If <laughs> trust us, yeah, it's good. Yeah, well, no. If people lose faith in that trust, then it's not going to be worth anything anymore. So, real money is different than that. I mean, I, I do think that uh, in your emergency bag, you should have some kind of a bug out bag. You should have um, you should have some money. You should have some checks, and you should have some uh, credit cards. So, throw a credit card in there. You don't use much, um, and so basically, that's just for an emergency. You'll have something. <clears throat> Because you know, sometimes you know, the different different emergencies could uh, entail different things. So you really have to be prepared for the unexpected. I mean, you know, maybe we have some problems, and then everything comes back online for a while. Well, gosh, if your credit card might work, you might want to have one. Because um, when you're out of cash and you have absolutely nothing, then try and get something. Try and get something for nothing. Don't work too long. But if you have a check, I mean, some people even take a check, hoping that things will get better. So anyway, that's something to think about. Um, all right, so that's money. What else do we need? Um, uh, da, 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 transportation. Um, so transportation might be like a four-wheel drive, um, a four-wheel drive SUV. I would either, if I was going to buy one, I would buy either a flex fuel, which means you can use gasoline or mostly ethanol. Um, you, you could actually, you know, with with straight alcohol, ethanol, and a little bit of gasoline, you can make one of those flex fuel cars run just fine. Um, <clears throat> uh, the worst thing you could buy would be a gasoline engine um, because everybody needs gasoline and gasoline doesn't store very well and you can't make it <clears throat> you can't make it um, diesel you could buy a diesel a diesel would also be a good choice uh, big rigs run on diesel generators run on diesel the military runs on diesel I think some t forms of jet fuel could actually run in a diesel vehicle um, but actually I'm sorry the problem with diesel is they've done this environmental BS and you gotta have some kind of special liquid, and if you don't put that liquid in your car, the chip in your car tells tells it, no, you can't run. So you would actually have to get a diesel prior to, I think 2007, but you will have to check on that. Uh, I do not clearly remember the year in which you want something that can run just on straight diesel and doesn't have require the little additive that you've gotta put in there. Uh, <clears throat> let me see um, and I think you need something that runs on the on the regular diesel and not just the newer diesel anyway something to look up put that in your uh, you can research that <clears throat> all right what else do you need vehicle okay uh, now besides like a four-wheel drive type vehicle um, then you could look at, of course, something like a bicycle or a motorcycle or a moped. Those might be good, you know, if, if gasoline goes really crazy, then a moped's really efficient. A uh, bicycle, of course, you don't need gasoline on. You don't need gasoline for that. Much better than walking. <clears throat> All right, what do we go after transportation? 
uh, tools, all right? Tools, you're gonna have to be doing a lot of stuff for yourself. Uh, you're gonna have to be jury rigging stuff that you wouldn't be doing before. Before you just throw, throw it out and buy a new one, now you might have to actually fix it or make stuff work or invent your own thing to do whatever you wanna do. So you need tools, all kinds of hand tools. Go to the hardware store, figure out what you need. Um, also, you know, multi-tools are awesome for uh, bug out bags. Uh, knives are good for everything. I wouldn't buy any cheap knives because cheap knives are just horrific in many levels. Just trust me on that. If you're not spending at least, uh, you know, 50 bucks on a knife, you're probably making the wrong decision. Um, knives, uh, swords, machetes, uh, axes, uh, just any and all kinds of tools that you can think of would be good. Um, <clears throat> um, redundancy in everything. Um, you know, you need to buy a redundant supply of everything. So, you know, you might think, you might look at your car and say, okay, well, what are some things on this car that could break down? Let's buy redundancy in that. Redundancy in weapons, everything. You know, buy spare parts for stuff. Um, what is next? What else do you need to do? Uh, you do need a bug out bag. Inside that bug out bag, you need everything that you would need to su to survive for, you know, I don't know, at least three days. Let's say at least three days. Um, and you go through the same, you go through the same system that you do for longer term sur survival. You know, first is water, second food, third shelter, fourth weapons, fifth, um, what was it, medical, um, and all that needs to be in your bug out bag. Um, <clears throat> you know, any kind of medical, let's, if, let's go back to the medical, um, you need an extra pair of glasses, you need uh, extra pairs of contacts, you need um, uh, any medication that you that you uh, that you need you need an extra supply of that you know tell your doctor you're going on a cruise or you're going to some foreign country or tell him you know something whatever so he can give you extra supply of your uh, of your medications if you're taking them um, let me see what else um, Diabetics. Diabetics will die very quickly if they do not have insulin. So you need to you need to have extra insulin on, on hand. And what you also need to do is investigate insulin that doesn't require refrigeration. I think there actually is some kind of insulation uh, insulin that you can buy that doesn't require uh, refrigeration. That would be that would be ideal. Um, you really need to investigate that, research that. I think I think it does exist. <clears throat> Otherwise, you could also look at at you know trying to figure out how you're going to keep the insulin cool because insulin most of it needs to be kept cold or cool. So you need to investigate ways to keep to get in extra insulin and keep it cold. Um, you know, an ice chest um, in a dark room. Um, let me see what else. Uh, they have some coolers that uh, can just plug into, let's say, uh, your SUV, and it basically is uh, basically like a little refrigerator, but it's very something very portable. Um, um, lights and power, energy. Um, you should probably get some solar panels. Um, there's all kinds of different solar panels. You need small ones. You need big ones. Uh, some you could use on the go. Other ones are big ones that would just stay in place and you wouldn't really be able to go mobile with them. Um, you can get propane cylinders, large and small. Um, you can buy, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm just talking about the stuff you use for barbecues or campouts. Uh, you know, if you live in a place that gets cold, get some extra firewood, put it under a tarp in your backyard. Um, there's laws about storing extra, extra gasoline and fuel, so you need to look that up. Um, but uh, look into uh, storing some fuel or having extra. Always fill up your, your tank constantly. Don't let it get low. 
Um, wow, that was a, was that a freaking deer. Uh, communications is important. Uh, communications, uh, make sure you have a cell phone, make sure you have a cell phone charger. Uh, that goes back to the solar. You may need to use a solar device to charge your cell phone. Uh, if you have an iPhone like me, it's more than just a cell phone. Uh, you can text with it to save energy uh, or to save bandwidth or actually the voice may not be available but the text may because it uses a different system or uses less bandwidth. Um, my iPhone has you know, a compass in it, my iPhone has GPS in it, it has mapping, it has, uh, you can download PDF of survival stuff on it. I mean, an iPhone can do anything. Um, what else? Uh, some kind of a police band radio would be excellent so you can listen to fire and police and see what they're talking about. You know, maybe they'll, they'll tell you, you know, what's going on. Um, or you can listen to what's going on. Um, let me see. Uh, communications. Uh, having some kind of a little uh, walkie-talkie type device that could go, you know, a mile or so would be a good idea because the cellular towers could be overwhelmed and you need some kind of communication with, uh, with other people to coordinate for whatever purpose or to um, um, just be able to stay in touch with them. All right. Um, it's worthy of a. It's worthy of a, a topic of its own. But you need uh, you need fire, and uh, you need fire. So you need uh, you need lighters. You need uh, magne uh, magnesium uh, magnesium blocks with uh, the flint on it. You need um, all kinds of different ways to start fires. You need uh, matches. Um, Anyway, fire is super important. You're always going to need fire. Don't be caught in a position where you don't have fire because, you know, if you're some guy that lives in an apartment that's all electric, I mean, you don't have any matches or lighters, really, try and start a fire, buddy. Seriously. We're so dependent on electricity. I mean, how are you going to start a fire? So, uh, fire is important. Uh, within tools, I would uh, throw things like, uh, you know, uh, lights. You can have... God, there's a lot of dead animals on the road. Um, you need uh, lights, so you need flashlights, uh, which goes back to the solar, and batteries. You need... Always get... Start buying rechargeable batteries. Don't buy any of these disposable batteries anymore. Uh, uh, flashlights, uh, lanterns, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Lanterns, some can run on electricity, batteries, some can run on... Uh, uh, different types of fuel uh, so you can investigate that you need light um, I don't know I think those are the basic topics if you if you would cover all those areas I think you would be uh, pretty pretty well off um, the other the only other thing that I might say is uh, you would probably want to to get uh, all your documents in a mobile format so in other words, you know, have the deed to your house uh, uh, all in a briefcase or something where you can just grab, grab that briefcase and go. Um, so have, have paper, paper documents of everything you have, you know, even, you know, um, recent bank statements, um, deed to your house, you know, different documents, don't like that. Don't have them all scattered all over your house. Have them in one centralized location where you can just grab and go. And uh, also, you know, if the computers go down or we have issues, I mean, paper is going to rule. So it's good to have all your stuff on paper. Um, you can also put some stuff on a flash drive, just have an extra backup somewhere. You know, take a picture of the deed to your house. Um, do different things like that um, to have that available so that you have some kind of backup that's like, you know, yes, this is my house. Yes, I'm supposed to be here. Um, uh, I would also include in their identification, you know, have your passport up to date. Have your have your passport in a place where you can grab and go. Uh, make sure you have your license. Uh, don't throw away old licenses. They, sometimes they cut out part of your old license. Keep it. 
that can be used by somebody to identify you. So even if it's expired, keep keep any kind of ID on hand um, so you can identify yourself if need be. All right, I'm gonna end it right there because I can't think of anything else now. But, but anyway, the, the reason that you need to prepare is because if you look at history and if you look at the nature of human beings, which are intertwined, of course. If you look at history, then you'll see that there has always been um, disasters, chaos, calamity, um, unexpected things, uh, uh, forces of nature, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, earthquakes, uh, comets hitting the earth, uh, volcanoes erupting, um, periods of warmness, peri periods of coolness, um, it's uh, dictators, tyrants, um, uh, wars, genocides, um, it's just, if you look at history, it's just an ongoing list of things gone wrong. So things have been going really well for quite some time in the United States and different parts of the world. And it's been a little bit too long, so we're probably due for something. So whether or not you think it's going to be, you know, 2012, which is already passed, but whether you think it's going to be 2012 or whether you think it's going to be, you know, um, uh, the, the government going tyrannical or a comet or, you know, a solar storm or whatever. I mean, there's a million things that could happen and, you know, the dinosaurs are not here, okay? And there's a lot of there's a lot of people that aren't here who weren't paranoid enough. <laughs> so, you know, it's not paranoia, it's it's being aware of the nature of man and and just plain history. You need to be prepared for the unexpected. So anyway, uh, get prepared. I mean if you're getting prepared now, you're very, very, very late to the game very super late to the game so you know bust your ass don't keep putting it off you know what to do just do it because if not you really are stupid you know uh, you know so don't be stupid go out go out today and buy some of this stuff and you know start taking care of business because you know those who don't prepare are the people who become a problem for other people I mean there's no reason to go to the supermarket and buy every single can of beans that's on the shelf if you've already done that ahead of time. If you've already stored up your stuff ahead of time, you're not a, a burden and a problem to the other people because the guy that comes right after you, believe me, you are a problem for that guy and his family because you bought 20 cans of beans. Well, you know, thanks a lot. You just killed a family. If you would have got your stuff ahead of time, you don't even have to go to the store and buy 20 cans of beans. You already got your beans. So, the people who don't prepare are, be, you know, they're, they're a death warrant for somebody else. You know, and I live in Texas, and, and uh, imagine, you know, imagine uh, 100,000 bachelors who live day to day. If you open up the refrigerator or look in their food pantry, they got like, you know, uh, uh, you know one, one thing of sour milk, you know, two cans of beans and half a bag of chips, but they've got, you know, 20 assault rifles and 5,000 rounds of ammunition. I mean, where, where, where is that going to go? How, you know, where, where does that go? So, you know, he's, he's overcompensated in one area and he's undercompensated in the other area and he becomes a problem for everybody else. If everybody were prepared, then we wouldn't have big problems because you say, oh, well, gosh, you know, the power's out. Well, fine, I got my solar thing. And they say, oh, well, gosh, you know, the supermarket is is out of goods. Well, I've got my own. You know, it's like, well, the police can't come. Well, I've got my own. And so these people have no reason to have to, to, to riot or they have no reason to go and try and steal from their neighbor because they're, they're already covered. They're self-sufficient. They're not a problem to somebody else. The people who don't prepare are a threat and a problem for everybody else. So 
if you want to make, make fun of people that prepare, well, you're really the problem. You're the danger to society, the person who doesn't prepare. You know, if, if you store supplies ahead of time, you're just stimulating the economy. You're not hoarding because you did it ahead of time. It's the people who wait to the last minute who's going to be the hoarders and the people doing something that's bad because they're going to walk into the store and buy every damn thing they can get their hands on. You know, because their failure to prepare hurts everybody else. So the guy who gets there late is going to get nothing. Or he's going to get one can of beans and the other guy, you know, bought 50. So anyway, uh, it's just human history just keeps happening over and over. And, you know, you try and talk to people about very reasonable things to do, like, you know, preparing for unexpected things. And they're just complete idiots. You know, and you know, the, the worst idiot who is an idiot who knows exactly what he needs to do and just keeps putting it off, keeps putting it off. Oh, I'll, I'll get around to that. And oh, I want to upgrade my house first and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, get your shit together. Seriously. <laughs> you're you're going to be a, you're going to be a problem for yourself, your family, your neighbors and for everybody else around you. Get your stuff together. Okay. All right. Over now.